Hi everyone, hope you're all doing really well and welcome to my August wrap up. So I didn't read as many books this month as normal. Um, one of the ones was, one of the books I read was really long and that just ate into my reading time a lot because it took me ages to finish it. So not going to be a particularly long video and God, it's been like a couple, it's been like two weeks since I filmed a video um, because I was away helping my sister move house. We moved her from West Sussex down at the, big, at the bottom of England, it's south of London, back home to Aberdeen. So we moved her from there up last week. So I've had a really busy week doing that and helping move her and her cat and then decorating her new flat and stuff and helping her move in. It's been ages since I filmed a video because I filmed everything ahead of time. And I've completely forgot how like it is. So I'm just feeling really awkward to doing it. Ah, words are not words are not happening. Sentences. What's going on? But yeah, but I do have a bit more time to read. I think as I said in a previous video, at some point I have a new job and I actually have a lot of commute time. It's it's um down down in Glasgow and I live in the east of Scotland, so it's about a two, three hour journey down every week. Um and so I have actually have got to put quite a bit of time to read on the bus, which is quite good fun. So without any further ado, I will get into the books that I've been reading this month. So the first one I read was The Gunslinger by Stephen King. This is my first time reading Stephen King and I'm joining in with a group discussion that Steve Talks About Books and Stuff is doing on his channel. And yeah, so I read The Gunslinger this month. And I know that a lot of people say this is the worst of the Dark Tower and stuff and that it's not a really good place to start, but you know, I actually really enjoyed this book. I have no clue what went, what went on in it. Like, if you asked me what that book was about, I'd be like, um... But I did really enjoy it. I really liked the writing style. I thought Roland was a really interesting character. And I liked just sort of the way things went on. But I have no idea what it was about, but I can tell that it was really... It's leading into something very interesting and it's setting a lot of things up. I think it would be very interesting once, I've done, once I'm done with this series to go back and read The Gunslinger and see just how much it was hinting at because I think a lot of people who have read the series says that yeah it is just one big prologue to the rest of the series so I'm very interested to continue. I think I gave it three and a half stars maybe four um, just because as I said it wasn't the best book I've ever read in my entire life but I did enjoy it and I like where it's going. The second book that I read was Black Wings Beating by Alex London. I actually read this like in a day because I joined in with just some reading sprints somebody was doing. It's my first time actually doing reading sprints which was really fun and apparently I can read very quickly. So I read this in about a day. I do have a review up for this book because I really enjoyed this book and I had a lot to say about it so definitely go check out my review. It's spoiler free and yeah I absolutely loved this book. I think four and a half stars. Really enjoyed it. Really loved the sibling dynamic. Really loved all the quite flawed characters that there are. Really 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 felt grounded and realistic and I'm really really excited to read the rest of this series so yeah, absolutely fantastic book. And then the book that I read that really cut into my reading month was Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. So if anyone knows this book, it's something like 845 pages long. And um, thankfully I had it on ebook, so I kind of didn't really feel like it was taking me too long. But yeah, um, that took me absolutely forever to get through. And I have really mixed feelings on that book because I really enjoyed it. If you haven't, if you haven't read the Priory of the Orange Tree, it is about a fantasy world where you follow several points of view. You're in the West with this woman called Eid, who is a sort of maid servant to the Queen, and she is actually not a spy, but she works for a sort of secret organization, and she's been sent to the palace as an almost bodyguard to the Queen without her knowledge. And yeah, and her. So you've got her. You've got in the East. Then you've got this woman called Tane, who is in training to become a dragon rider and really what because in that you know there are dragons in this world and her part of the country like worships dragons as gods and every sort of 50 to 100 years or something they allow initiates to have the chance to be dragon riders so she's going through that and also in that part of the world you are following Nicolas who is an older man who has been exiled by the queen that Eid works for um, and you sort of see what's happening with him and then you also follow a man called Loth, who is the Queen Sabran's best friend, who has been sent away from court and is sort of on a little mission that he's kind of been forced into. So you're following all these four characters and I really, really enjoyed this book. I think I'm going to do a review on it because I have a lot to say about it. And I really loved the world building. I loved the world building. I loved the religions, especially because in um, Sabran's country and stuff, they have this thing called Virtudon where 
you sort of like pick a patron knight from these old stories that almost feel King Arthur-esque and right knights of the round table sort of vibes even though it's not that um, and you sort of pick your patron knight and you'll like adhere to their principles or something like it's a really interesting religion and they don't like dragons then versus the people in the east who like worship dragons almost as gods and then you also have this the secret organization that Eid works for who um, worship almost a different version of the story that the Virtudum religion comes from. Like, it's quite interesting. Um, yeah, just really an interesting world building concept. You've got good dragons and you've got evil dragons and you've got a whole cast of characters, but the plot's quite good. But I think my big series, my big thoughts on Pirates of the Orange Tree is it needs to be a series and not standalone because there's so, it's got all the right things and none of the time to flesh it out. You spend time on page with all the wrong things and all the important things practically happen off page and the pacing is just completely all over the place. It really needed to be a series. Um, I actually might, if I do a, do a review, I might actually try and sit and work out what I would recommend the series being and which parts I would have happen in which book because yeah, it needs to be a series because very, all very good at having a standalone but I feel like because she's almost rushing through everything to make it fit. You never feel like there's actually any stakes in this book, you never feel like there's any chance for anything to go wrong because there's not the time for it to go wrong and then get to where you want it to get to. So yeah, and a lot of things that happen, like you get a lot of build up to things that you think is going to happen and then it doesn't happen, almost as if she's trying to subvert your expectations, but not well. And it happens with just about every single plot point, is you'll have all this build up to something and it just doesn't happen or it's over in like half a sentence or it doesn't even happen on page or and then vice versa no build up to something and it just kind of comes out of left field and you're just like oh okay what's going on there so yeah um i did really enjoy this book i find some of the characters really interesting Eid was a very interesting character as was nicholas um but yeah i'll get into that in my review and stuff but i think i give this about three stars or something it was alright, I, I did really enjoy it though, I was definitely interested in reading it, I didn't find it too difficult to like push through, I never thought about DNFing it at all, but I just overall think it has a few pacing issues and should have been a series. The next book that I read was Circus of Wonders, this was an interesting historical fa fan historical fiction book that I just had on my TBR, I don't know where I got this book from, I cannot remember if I saw it in a list or someone recommended it to me. But it happened to be like really cheap on uh, Kindle, so I bought it and I read it. And yeah, it was really good. It's a sort of historical fiction set in the 1800s, following this girl who has like uh, birthmarks on her skin. And obviously she's kind of ostracised by her village because of this. And her father then sells her to a trap passing circus. And she kind of find it, finds a sort of place for herself in this circus with these other people who are just like her. And have been through the same things as her and she's sort of like begins to make a name for herself and things, starts to fall in love with somebody and it's a really sweet little book, I really enjoyed it. Um, some of the parts I find a bit rushed, like the, her relationship, it felt a bit told rather than shown and but it had some really interesting things about the Crimean War and war veterans and stuff from that. The man who owns the circus is a very interesting, manipulative, quite horrible character, he was very interesting to read about and also his relationship with his brother and how that's formed and they're quite attached to each other particularly the brother being almost like in his shadow like it was just had some really interesting things about family and relationships and all the characters were really interesting i loved the setting i loved the circus feel and it was it really felt like it was also shining a light almost on what circuses were actually like in that time because i know things like the greatest showman had almost like glamorized them and make them seem like much nicer than they were when actually you know these were people that got bought and sold just because of the way they looked and even after they died they got stuffed and then still put on sh on display for people to come and laugh at and poke and prod and they really weren't treated like people a lot of the time. And it really kind of shines a light on that and how, you know, even children and stuff are, you know, bought and sold because of the way they looked and it was really, you know, it was really quite horrible. Um, but then also how some people like Nell, our main character, almost have a bit of power in the way they're seen and how the story that gets woven for them in their circus and things. You know, it sort of shows sort of two sides of the coin, but ultimately how they're all just being used and abused really by these people. And it was just a really interesting book, just sort of to actually examine it from that more realistic lens, as opposed to 
you know, like, so, like something like Rita, Rita Showman, you know, glamorizing it or putting it in a sort of rose tinted lens and stuff. It was a really interesting book. I think I gave it three and a half stars, four stars. Like, it wasn't amazing. It's not something I think I would find myself rereading, but I really enjoyed it. I thought the characters were all great, and as I said, I just found the entire concept quite interesting to read. And last but not least, I read Fireborn by Rosario Munda. This is one I've had on my TBR for a while. I've seen a few folk talking about it, and especially people who have the same book, book tastes as me raving about it. I read this in a day. I absolutely loved this book. I can't, I'm going to go out and find the sequel as soon as possible. This is a really, really good book set in a world that has dragons and people who sort of like ride the dragons and stuff. And you're following these two dragon riders, Lee and Annie. And Lee is the son of the previous ruling regime who were overthrown in the, in the revolution and all murdered. But for some reason his life really got spared because he was a little boy, someone took pity on him and just sent him off to an orphanage with a new name. So that people didn't know that he was the son of the previous sort of king. And then you also follow Annie whose family were killed by the previous regime, they were like burned to death by dragons. And like she knows who, who Lee is but they never discuss it and like he knows that she knows who he really is but they just don't talk about it and they have because they grew up together in the orphanage and have ended up being dragon riders together and they're now competing with other dragon riders to be of basically for succession for this new re regime that's been implemented by the guy who's in charge of the revolution and their friendship and stuff is so interesting because it's very tense there's this sort of unspoken tension between them because of the things that they know about each other and I really love this book. I love the way the dragons were implemented. I think I'm going to do a review on this book, so I'll go into it more in depth there. I just love the way that the dragons were not not quite sort of Aragon style sentience, but almost that sort of bond, you know, they're almost connected by their minds and stuff, especially when they're riding them. Um, and just lots of little details of the world that I just really loved. I can't really get into because I've just finished it and it's still almost like bouncing around in my head and I can't really make sense of all the thoughts I have. but. I just absolutely love this book so much. Like I said, their friendship and like tense romance that kind of happens in the middle of the book and stuff, it was just so compelling to read. I loved both their points of view. I love the way this book was written with some flashbacks and some like and then internal monologues. I loved just the concept of the sort of dragon fights and the trials that they're going through. I loved the sort of political tension. I loved the sort of looming war that's coming and stuff, like it's it's shaping up to be a really really great series and there's so many characters in here as well, you've got Krissa, you've got Koi, I think his name is, you've got Duck, you've got Power, Power is a fascinating character, I'm going to talk more about him in my review, and you've just got all these really interesting characters of like varying degrees of morality and things just kind of kicking about and carving out their own place in the narrative and stuff and yeah, it's just a really, really great book. I loved it so much. I loved the dragons. Especially kind of coming off the back of Prior of the Orange Tree, which didn't do as much with the dragons as I wanted it to, so having that here kind of made up for that. As I said, I just couldn't put this down. I started reading it 2 o'clock on Saturday and I'd finished it by 11 o'clock on Saturday night. Um, yeah, cannot recommend this enough. I absolutely loved this book. 5 out of 5 stars, I will definitely be getting to, to Flamefall as soon as it's physically possible. And that's it for this month, as I said, only the 5 books, but that's still pretty good, and I, you know, I had a much better reading month this month than I had last month, if you've seen my July wrap up, you know, I had a bit of a shit reading month, a lot of really bad books, a lot of duds, whereas I basically loved all of these, even the ones that I perhaps didn't enjoy as much, I still really, really enjoyed, and yeah, just fantastic, I'm gonna have more reviews coming out, I'm just a bit all over the place at the moment. I had a week and a half away, as I said, helping with my sister move, and then I have got work again this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then the following week I'm actually at work for five days in a row. We're doing an exhibition and stuff, so I actually need to be in work every single day that week. So I'm sort of trying to schedule videos ahead of time, trying to be like organised, and it's kind of not really happening because I was at home and then I've just got back to my flat today. I have washing to sort out. I need to tidy because of cardboard boxes everywhere. Um, yeah, lots is just going on. And I'm feeling just a bit stressed, even though I've got no reason to be stressed. Also, I'm in my university's um, archery club as well, and 
we're having such a time at the moment trying to sort out like, cause we're supposed to be going back to like sessions in like two weeks. We have a problem with the hall we use. So we're trying to sort that out, but like our president's like, oh yeah, we'll have a meeting about it soon. And I'm like, no, we need to have a meeting about it now cause it's gonna probably gonna take more than two weeks to sort this problem. So, oh, it's a whole thing and I'm really stressed about it, but it's kind of out of my control, but hopefully we'll get that sorted. Because yeah, I go back to uni next month, uh, which is going to be interesting as well because I'm full time, as I said I'm part of my archery club and that's also going to take up more of my time, you know, we train on Saturdays and in evenings and yeah, I'm basically going to have like one free day a week now moving forward, so hopefully I'll be able to keep up with my two videos a week um, schedule, I'll let you know if I think that's going to change, but obviously don't worry about it for now, September will still be fine, I don't go back until the end of September and yeah, I think I've rambled on a bit too long in this video. Hopefully it hasn't died on me because it's not on very good uh, battery. But yeah, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have you read any of these books? Definitely let me know what you thought of them down in the comments. Or are they on your TBR? Are you looking forward to reading them? Um, you know, definitely let me know in the comments. If you reached the end of this video, feel free to leave a like on it and feel free to subscribe. As I said, I try to post two days a week. Um, mix of things like book reviews and wrap ups and things and I'm also kind of branching out into some TV reviews and things. But that's it from me for this video, thank you very much for watching, I will see you next time.